All right, so so we've got our quaternions. Uh, this is how we denoted a quaternion. There, it, you could say x, y, z, but I'm just going to condense this down to a, to just a v. And now what we want to do is we want to find the inverse inverse quaternion. Remember, this quaternion represents a rotation. Okay, so we want to know the quaternion. We have a quaternion Q, and we want to find the inverse rotation that will get us back to the identity quaternion, which we discussed last time was zero, uh, 1, 0. In other words, what rotation will undo the rotation that we just did? And the, uh, the first impulse is to say, well, we could just say, we could just add some negatives in there, right? Because that's what worked with our vectors and our, and our matrices. Uh, we just add a bunch of negatives and we'll actually know these two these two quaternions here are the exact same thing and I'll show you why let's say I have a car okay I'm gonna draw this car and the car is headed this way what a really poorly drawn car and the wheel is turning uh, clockwise just like this now if I do two things at once if I turn the car around Okay, now the car is facing this way. Now the axle of rotation, the axis of rotation, the vector, the V that represents the axis of rotation has been flipped. It's negative of what it was before, right? We made it negative. But we also drive the car backwards. We're still heading in the same direction and we're still rotating that wheel counterclockwise. So really, we can only do one of the two things. We need either a negative here or a negative there. We need it to be negative WV or W negative V. Now we have, now we have an inverse. And uh, let's derive this numerically. If you remember, the way we got this quaternion was we did cosine theta over 2. That got us our W and sine theta over 2 times n hat that got us our v right now we want to do the opposite rotation so we want negative theta so i'm going to add a negative right here negative theta negative theta but if you look at a cosine curve a cosine looks like looks like this right here it's pretty poorly drawn but if I t if I'm right here on my cosine curve and then I take a negative well I still have the same value so this negative has no effect so this is still cosine theta over 2 or W but over here if I have a sine curve let me now let me draw a sine curve sine curves look like this if I have a theta value here that I make negative then that's the same thing as make as as making the sine negative I get the I was up here I'm now down here everything turns negative so it's the same thing as saying negative sine theta over 2 n hat which is the same thing as saying negative V so there you have it Let's hop off the code and see how it works. All right, here's our quaternion inversion formula. Let's do it. Uh, first, we have to create a quaternion. The W, we're just going to borrow from our existing quaternion. But the X, the Y, and the Z, we're going to make negative. And that's pretty much it very simple algorithm not even an algorithm just a simple function let's see what it does now so this is what we had from from the last video when we rotated 90 degrees around the x-axis and now when we take our inverse we're still rotating we're now we're rotating negative 90 degrees w hasn't changed it's v that's changed uh, and that's because th that's like remember the car analogy when you 
want to spin your wheel the other way, the way you do that with quaternions is to turn your car around backwards. And so we have the same V vector here, except now uh, it's negative, and so we're rotating the opposite direction. So that's it for this one. Next time we'll go a little farther with quaternions. Uh, I think we're going to be figuring out how to transform vectors with them. See you next time.